last day of the season. I'm running out of time. I'm calling him Jekyll and Hyde because he's just a typical four point on one side and he's got just a mess of stuff on the other. Every once in a while you encounter a buck that's, that's too smart to kill. Anyone who's hunted deer a lot probably has those stories that even the best mule deer hunter, he can outsmart them. Did you hear a whop? I didn't. You know, when you're hunting, you're always trying to figure out, well, what's going to be, if you're, if you're hunting for big bucks, trophy bucks, what, what type of buck are we looking for? What's our benchmark? And sometimes you see one and you only get a glimpse, and that's what happened on this buck. Guys, will come the road. I'll stay here in case I gotta jump to the jeep. That is weird. This bug's got cheaters and stuff. Is that him? Yeah, like one, two, three, four of them. Yeah. Two does came out. So, you know, the buck that, that I'm chasing around, uh, we were calling him Jekyll and Hyde. He, he's real beautiful on one side, got all kinds of a stuff going on the other. And he outsmarted us day after day after day. And this is not unique to me. This has been happening on this place for decades, actually. You filmed dad on what we call the cheater buck. And that buck outsmarted you guys, was it days? Yes, same exact thing, four days. Dad still claims it's one of the smartest bucks he ever hunted. We've been watching this buck, folks, for, uh, for a half hour. He's been laying in that sagebrush. And let me tell you that uh, a lot of times these old bucks will pull off and lay down in the middle of the day in the sagebrush right out in the open. Most people don't know that. Most people are looking for him in the Quaker patches or 
or in their thick brush. But a lot of times those bucks, especially an old buck like him, he's really heavy, he's old, he's probably nine, 10 years old, will get away and lay right smack dab out there in the sagebrush. So it's important that you set your spot and scope up like we did here and scan everywhere. Every sagebrush flat, under every nook and cranny, and you're gonna find a buck like this. He finally decided to get up and move off, and I think he's gonna go in the Quaker patch over there, but uh, that's a tip to remember when you're out here hunting mule deer out west. We ended up killing him, but just on the last hour, the last day, but it was a fluke. The buck had heard some elk hunters, I think cow elk hunters were shooting down the valley and got nervous and got up and moved to the other side of, of the hill when we happened to be sitting above him trying to pick him out of the hillside and he came up out of one piece of brush into another and dad was able to get him but he was very smart same thing as what what you're you're seeing with your buck these smart bucks every once in a while you encounter a buck that's that's too smart to kill you just and anyone who's hunted deer a lot probably has those stories that even the best mule deer hunter he can outsmart them. And your buck is one of them. That cheater buck was one of them. Even though we killed him, it was a, almost, it was an accident pretty much. But I mean, hats, hat tip to him, hats off, right? Big old buck like that, it outsmarts you. And that's what that's keeps the way you, it goes, right? That's what keeps you after it. Cause that's what keeps me at, up at night is sitting there going, had we played this card versus that card first, would we have been able to take him? And that's what keeps you coming back year after year and matching wits with these smart, smart old mature bucks. As residents of Wyoming, we're always, you know, we can hunt the same areas over and over each year, so you're always in the back of your mind going, oh, you know, you find yourself constantly saying, boy, if you get another year on that buck, another two years on that buck, but, you know, you have the winter to account for. He's going to be a stud next year mm -hmm. if he makes it. He's in really good shape. He'll make it unless the winter is just absolute hell. The largest killer of deer in Wyoming is the winter, our, our winters, you know, followed by highways, predation, fences, you go down the list of all that, but, the, but by far, winters are a constant cycle in Wyoming. About every three to five years, we have one of these winters that knocks it down. Now, this was an exceptionally bad. This is like the worst in maybe pushing 50 to 100 year type catastrophe for our deer. Who would have known that I I was making a statement while we were down there looking at that buck going, gosh, you know, he'll make this winter unless it's really bad. Come to find out it was a prophecy. Yeah. This has been a horrible winter. Statewide is bad. I mean, average, we probably lost, I'm guessing here, if you averaged it over the whole state, we lost half our deer. Half? Half. And some areas lost sev over 70%. Uh, Wendell's area down there, Region K, I think is the worst in the state. Maybe over by Bags might be almost as bad, but Region K, I think they lost almost 80% of their deer. And we're getting reports of that now. We're yeah. here late summer, you're getting reports from on the ground, yep. people saying, verifying that. Yep. Corky was moving cows just recently, so he spent a lot of time in that where we hunt deer. And he said, I am not, I'm seeing 10% of what we normally do, if that. Yeah. And, and, and the quality's not there, not to mention the quantity of not just bucks, but does and fawns and, and the, the gamut of deer, period. It's yes. bad, yeah. really bad. Uh, it's gonna be a while to come back because the does have no fawns. I talked to a biologist on the phone for an hour the other day over in Western Wyoming, and he told me, you know, they're just, there's, there's no fawns. They're not seeing any fawns. Uh, the does look really healthy, of course, because they sloughed their fawns. And so they have no anchor, you know, dragging them back. They're just 
gobbling up all of this. You know, the, the, the silver lining to a bad winter is we have incredible habitat improvement, and we're seeing that. And Cork has verified that, yeah. that the grass is off the chart. And we've had a wet summer followed, following this winter. We've had a late spring, a slow warm up, and a consistent weather pattern of rain all summer. We've seen it up here. And so the habitat is significantly improved for the deer that are there. Um, but we're, we have no fawn crops, so we're going, we're going to go into the winter with does that are exceptionally healthy, very fat. Hopefully they get bred up and we have twins There's less next of year. them, yes. Yep, and so that's what we're, we're faced with, so we're going to have a complete zero out of a generation. Well, hopefully we took all our lumps in one yeah. and we don't have to put up with this for three more because that would be detrimental. It's like Dad talks about. Back in the 70s or late 60s, they had a winter like this and it followed up with two more. Yeah. It was three in a row and it really, really knocked everything back. But I think that it, it, those three bad winters led to the habitat improvement that we saw go into the 70s with lots of deer yeah. uh, the, the following decade after that. So I don't know. We don't, don't know at this point what's gonna happen, but they're gonna go into the winter fat and healthy, I know that. So back to this, this winter and that, that thing in that gnaws in the back of your head when you're, when you're looking at a deer and a buck going, he's good enough because he may not make a winter. Let's check out what you made the decision of. That's a pretty deer. Did you hear a whop? I didn't. Oh, where they went. Now I'm maybe back, huh? That was cool, freaking moose. Well, we spent two days looking for that buck. I'm calling him Jekyll and Hyde because he's just a typical four point on one side and he's got just a mess of stuff on the other. He, he eluded us the other day and we've spent four hunts trying to find him. We found him this morning. This is the last day of the season. I'm running out of time. Hopefully him and Curly will feed back into this meadow or, these t or this um, grove behind us and we're able to take him this morning or tonight he's a little spooky we kind of pushed him a little hard the other day so we're gonna just let him calm down he's had a couple days to do that he's not too freaked out we hadn't we didn't shoot at him we didn't chase him but he knows we're here so we're just gonna have to slow down and take some patience Well, unfortunately, it happens with everybody, it happens with us. We just weren't able to get the deer. Um, ran out of time, ran out of daylight, and he just wouldn't move. We sat on him all day, and uh, him and that other buck just wouldn't leave where, uh, where they were, and we just couldn't get, get in there and get it done. So it happens. However, let's go check on my brother Guy. He's also hunting, and uh, hopefully he's had some better success. Comes clear, I'll shoot him again. Yeah. 
Well, we got that buck. We spotted him down below and he was with the, another buck that was really nervous. I don't know if they've been shot at or something, but they were really, really nervous and cagey and the other buck drug him up into this aspen grove and he kept wanting to feed and the other buck was nervous and then we spotted the other buck laying in the aspen grove watching his backtrack. We looped around, got on top here and just glass, glass, glass and sure enough the big buck fed out above the aspen in the in the grove in the shade and I was able to get a shot. The first shot, I don't know what happened. I, it's 290 yards, I'm dead rest on these swagger bipods completely padded up. I, I'm hoping maybe I hit a branch on one of those dead aspens and it exploded because in the footage you see it explode. He looped around, then we couldn't tell if it was him. So we had to get a spot and scope on him, watch him, watch him, watch him. He was just stand there because the last thing we want to do is obviously shoot two bucks because there's two in here. And then uh, finally he turned and jumped a log. I could see that little cheater on his, on his right side and it was him and he stopped and put on him. Poof, down he went. So let's go take a look at him. <laughs> what a what a buck. He has height. Look at that. <laughs> well, here's the big old typical. We uh, it was a heck of a hunt. <laughs> like I explained on the way over here, we got him up out of the brush and he's just a really nice big typical with a couple cheaters starting and just a heck of a buck. His G4 is really long, just heavy, just a really good hump. Ike was on a big non-typical this morning. We were going round and round with, never got him. So, well, we hope you enjoyed today's show. We had a great time down here in Southern Wyoming, the Aspen sagebrush country with Wendell and Corky and Bodie. Just a family affair, got a big buck. Till next time, remember, fair chase is the only way to hunt and take trophy big game. <laughs>